we're going to go ahead and take this picture of the bride. Where this is an NEF file, that's a Nikon RAW file. And we're going to double click it open. It'll open in Adobe Camera Raw. In Adobe Camera Raw, it pops up. We're going to go ahead and first adjust the profile. In the edit option, we're going to go ahead and change from Adobe Color to Adobe Portrait to add a little more color friendly option for the portrait. In the basics tab, we're going to go ahead and click the white balance dropper, eyedropper tool. And we're going to go ahead and click somewhere on her white dress. That'll adjust the colors to match. That is white and the rest appropriately. See, so it does warm it up a little bit. Change that color. Balance goes from 3150 to 3450. A fairly minor number change, but it does make a significantly warming up of the bride and making a little more flattering light. And we're going to go ahead and click the film button. Click it once to hide it because we only have one image here. I want to see this a little bit larger than the smaller version with all the thumbnails attached. So I see the one image a little bit larger to fit my screen better. I'm going to go back to my options and I'm going to hit auto. And to make some auto changes to that adjustment. Darkens the uh, eyelashes, increases the contrast a little bit, drops down the highlights a bit. Now from this point we're going to go ahead and adjust the automatic sliders. I'm going to go ahead and put the exposure back to zero. We're going to put the contrast to negative 20. We're going to set the clarity to 8. And that makes a few more adjustments to override the automatic sense. Now we're going to use the Content Aware Remove tool to correct blemishes. In the toolbar, up on the right side here, we're going to go ahead and click the Band-Aid tool, which is the healing icon. And underneath our histogram now are the options of the healing tools. We're going to make sure that the content aware remove option is on and it is selected. We'll go ahead and zoom into 100% to see pixel for pixel. And in the healing brush settings, we can go ahead and change it to 15 on the size and 100 on the opacity. That changes the size of my brush. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on one of the spots on the face. And it does help remove some of those blemishes on the face. Now I'll go to the right side of this column. Here we have the options, I can hit show overlay and it will show the portions that I've actually edited. Now I can click on one and I can make more adjustments into the future. If I wanted to edit an additional one, I could play with the options and adjust those a little bit by hitting show overlay. I'm going to turn show, show overlay off. I'm going to click on a few areas of her face just to remove some blemishes. And does a pretty good job of removing her blemishes. Personally, I would probably use a little bit smaller brush. The book says to do a 15 setting. I might get a little bit smaller personally, but the book does say to use 15. And as I click on these portions, it just, using artificial intelligence in the content aware, starts to just touch up lots of little blemishes. I can click up here, drag down, clicking to where you want a, a smooth skin, dragging down. And that's looking much better. Now we're going to enhance the face with mask adjustments. Now a mask are these changes that are temporarily done. They're not permanently damaging the file. We want to go and make sure we can see the eyes, which we can. If not, you can use the space bar to navigate through and see the eyes nice and close. Clicking the masking icon here, shortcut is the letter M. We're going to use a brush icon. We're going to click brush. And we're going to change our settings to 2 on the size, 100 to feathered, 50 on the flow, 100 on the density, and we're going to make sure the auto mask is turned off. And that matches about the size of the iris on her eyes. And we're going to bump the saturation on my settings here. And we're going to go ahead and bump up the saturation settings to 70. I'm going to drag the brush over her iris. 
and click and drag in each eye to increase the blues that were already a little bit there naturally in her eye. About like that. Now I could adjust it more or less to make it even go black and white if I wanted. But the book has us go to 70 on the saturation. It's a subtle adjustment at this point. Now we see mask one is here. We're going to go ahead and double click on the mask. And it will show you when you hover over it the red portion, kind of where it's actually been drawing on the eyes. We're going to go ahead and click on the mask name. We're going to call it Eyes Irises. And hit OK. We're going to go ahead and have the show overlay button on. That will show that hovering over the red portion that we've painted. It's been painted onto her eyes. And I can adjust that if I want by clicking on the brush and making that adjustment. But I don't want to do that. I want to keep it on her eyes. Now we're going to go ahead and create a new adjustment. Create a new mask at the top. We're going to do a new brush adjustment. The shortcut for this is the letter K. Now we're going to turn our saturation down to a negative 50 on the new mask. And we're going to brush the corner of the eyes down. I'm going to go ahead and change this by double clicking it to eye corners and hit OK. Now we're going to use another brush adjustment to brighten areas around the eyes. I'm going to go ahead and hit new mask or we can hit the letter K. I'm going to bump up the exposure to a 0.5. And we're going to brush over the white areas of the eye, changing the whites of the eye. Bumped it up about a 0.5, half a stop. And we're going to double click this one and name it Eye Brighten. And hit OK. If you feel it's a little bit too strong or not too strong, we can turn the show overlay off and we can start to brighten it up more or less to make those eyes a little whiter. We need a little bit of bloodshot aspect can start to come out. At some point it looks creepy, but at some point we can choose to brighten up those irises and the whites of the eye just a little bit, salt and pepper to taste, and that looks a little better before and after. Starting to make some significant changes to the picture. Now we're going to smooth some skin texture. Now to do that, we're going to go ahead and go to the... Now to do that, we're going to go ahead and create a new mask. And we're going to create Select People. And we zoom out a little bit, Control Zero, Fit Screen. Now it's doing a pretty good job of selecting the entire person. The artificial intelligence in this is getting pretty good. It's identified Person 1, Entire Person. But we don't necessarily want to do the entire person. We want to go ahead and select face, skin, and body skin. Select just your skin tones and not the rest of her. You go ahead and hit create. Now it has selected the mask. The next step for the book is to go ahead and to click into our settings under the mask settings. And we're going to go down to the effects panel. And under the effects panel, we're going to go ahead and turn down the texture to a negative 30. Now, if we turn it on all the way, you can definitely see the skin is softened between 0 and 100. There's some significant changes. We don't want to go too extreme. We're going to go to a negative 30. And this has softened the skin quite a bit. Now, a positive number would have actually given us a little more of a gritty feel. It would definitely not be as flattering as other skin tones. All the little imperfections are exaggerated. But a negative pattern will give it a very smooth, silky skin. And then we're we'll going to go to the mask setting. We're we'll going to double click it and we're going to name it 
skin and press OK. There you have it. You've opened up Adobe Camera Raw through Bridge and performed portrait retouching without needing any additional Photoshop work.